Tilder! What is this? This is the Godox SL150 version 2. How much does it cost? Approximately $340. They've updated the fan so that now it's pretty quiet. You can even turn the fan completely off. You can dim it down to 1%. There's no flicker. The colors out of the box is pretty good. Do I recommend it? If you don't want to spend the hefty price of the Aperture 120D, then absolutely yes. Done. Roll that intro. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So today we're going to find out whether or not the Godox SL150W version 2 is going to be the right solution for you and your overall lighting kit. And I want to thank Pergear for sending this out to me so I can provide you with an informational review today. Coming in at approximately $340, you're going to get the light itself, a power cord, a basic reflector, a wireless remote, and in some kits, you might actually get a little barn door attachment that has a honeycomb grid inside that you can take out, and a couple colored gels. Now, one thing to note about the whole barn door business, because the reflector has this weird bump texture that we're now starting to see manufacturers use, and I'm not exactly sure why they're doing it, but basically when you do have the honeycomb grid um, or you're trying to use the barn doors, because you have all this bumpiness in the reflector, it doesn't necessarily cut the light like you would. It actually creates all sorts of weird shadows. So pretty much this accessory is really not going to do a whole lot with you because of the included reflector. But in terms of the light built quality itself, it's made out of pretty much solid metal, very sturdy. The Bowens mount, I have no problems with it. It attaches quite well. In fact, with my 47 inch Lalfa softbox, the yoke design is quite solid and you can basically hold this 47 inch softbox at 90 degrees. Now there is a little rubber insert that goes in between the rosette locks. So I would guess if you really wanted to, you could probably take away that rubber so it really locks in. But for the most part, it was able to hold the 47 inch softbox no problem. Now, one awesome thing is the dimming quality and dimming capabilities of this light. Because this light doesn't jump in 10% increments, you can go down in 1% increment all the way down to 1%. So people that really needed to go really far down, you can get it down to 1%. And as far as I'm concerned, in terms of the dimming algorithm, it seems quite linear. It doesn't kind of jump really quickly in the beginning and then slowly taper off. It does a little bit, but it's really not that aggressive. So it's actually quite easy to fine tune what you need in terms of dimming. Now, the standout feature of this light and what I love about it is the fact that you actually have the option to turn the fan completely off. And this is something that I saw for the first time with the Nanlite Forza 60 that I reviewed not too long ago. And I really think, um, Lighting companies should probably just do this from now on. Give us the option to either change the fan curve like Aperture does or to turn it off completely because Think about it this way. You have a 150 watt light, which is already pretty powerful. But let's say this is the only light you got and you have to bring it in pretty close to the actor. And let's say you're got about 40% um, overall dimming with the fan on. But if because it's so close to the actor and you got the shotgun mic, the lavalier mic, you're probably maybe going to hear a fan sound. Not really because the fans are quite quiet. But let's say the fan does get into the audio recording. Turn that fan off and then adjust your dimming to get the same output. And now you have a light that's super powerful still even with the fan off. And 
basically you can have a completely silent setup as well. So speaking of all this power stuff, let's go through the test in terms of its output, its color quality, and of course the fan noise. When it comes to the 150 watt Cobb LED Arena, basically the reason it's so popular is because no matter where your settings are, you're generally probably going to be able to light whatever it is you're lighting because of its overall powerful output as you can see here. When it comes to the light quality right out of the box, and my GH5 is set exactly at 5600K, I did not do a custom white balance, we can see that the colors are actually doing quite well. The skin tones are right on the line, the reds, the magenta, the blue, and green, and yellow are all pretty much hitting the respective boxes, with the cyan just a little bit off, so this is really not that bad. So what's the bottom line here? Is the Godox 150 Mark II something you should be considering for your overall filmmaking kit? And I know the major question is going to be, does it actually beat out the Aperture 120D Mark II? And unfortunately, I can't give you a super definitive answer because I simply don't have a 120D Mark II to give you a direct comparison under the same conditions. But what I can say is from a budget standpoint, it does very well in giving filmmakers an additional option than buying the more expensive Aperture 120D Mark II. So let's kind of actually break that down a little bit. Why are why was the 120D even popular and why is everyone trying to compete against it? And it just so happens that the 120D, which kind of actually gives out about 150 watts of power, is a very versatile range for a light. You don't need to go to a 300D, which blasts out a whole bunch, and you don't need to go lower. This sits in the perfect spot for basically YouTube videos, studio videos, corporate uh, interviews, and of course, narrative films. But where the Godox doesn't um, have in terms of features natively is the fact that you can't readily battery power it with Sony V-mount batteries if you already have a bunch of V-mount batteries in your kit. But what you can do is something that I talked about a while back, is you can actually use camping generators that have a basic AC wall plug. You just need to make sure your camping generator can pump out more than 150 watts to be on the safe side. And these generators come in at approximately $150 to $250, depending on what capacity and power you need. So when you take this into consideration, an Aperture 120D Mark II is going to cost you approximately $750 out of the gate, and that does not include a battery. With the Godox 150, it's approximately $340, and let's say you do buy the $250 um, larger power generator, then you're only spending, let me do the math here, uh, $580, yes, approximately $580 with a battery that's going to last you approximately, I think it's like an hour and a half at full brightness for that specific one. So from a budget standpoint, yes, you are going to be able to do more because you have some money saved up. Now, is the light quality going to be as good as the Aperture 120D? And I would say the Godox does quite well. On the vector scope test, it really didn't look that bad. If there is a little shift somewhere, then you can either do a custom white balance, because in that test, I didn't do a custom white balance, just strictly 5600K. And of course, if you need to, do a little bit of color correction. Now, in terms of what I love about the Godox, aside from it being cheaper, is the fact that you can turn off the fan. When you turn off the fan, you lose approximately one and a third stops. And in the same example that I gave before, if there is a certain lighting setup where the light is close enough, and when you're dialing in your dimming, and you suddenly realize, hey, we're only at like 40%, if you're only at 40%, then simply, boom, hit that fan off, turn up the dimming to compensate for it, and you now have a completely silent setup. And when I was doing my initial test over here, when I had the fan on, I was at f5.6, and then when I turned the fan off at the same 100% brightness, I had to turn it down to 3.5. And 
pretty much speaking, when you're doing an interview setup, I'm pretty sure most people, especially on a GH5, is not going to use 3.5 as their aperture. They might use 2.8, maybe 2.5, but if you have those faster lenses at 1.7, then basically what I'm trying to tell you is, when you have control of the lighting situation, even though I had the window kind of playing a little bit of light in there, uh, you're gonna be just fine with the fan off or even with the fan on because when it comes to the fan noise, you really can't hear it from six feet away. So basically what I'm saying is if you're on a budget, you're starting to build out your lighting kit and you need a cob light in your setup, I have to say really take a look at the Godox 150 because at the end of the day, you're getting something that works. You can turn the fan off, giving you more versatility and if you have to, you can use camping generator batteries to power this thing portably. And remember, those generators have a bunch of other ports on it as well. So if you want to recharge a whole bunch of your batteries, uh, use the USBs for your cell phones and tablets, you are going to be able to dual purpose that camping battery for more than just powering your lights. So the last thing I wanna talk about, which I think some people are gonna ask here, is if you're turning the fan off in the 150, aren't you pretty much chain turning it into a fanless 60 SL60? Pretty much you are. So the question now is, is should you just get a whole bunch of 150s and forget about the 60s or should you actually get some 60s into your kit? And again, this is really, really gonna depend on your budget and what do you need. So if your budget allows it and you can see yourself using the 150s, but then also punching out that fan to use the 60 in some certain circumstances, then sure, you have the budget, it already works, and if you need a battery power it, it's still gonna be cheaper in the long run to get three of them if you're doing a three point lighting setup, because if you're gonna buy three Aperture 120Ds without even batteries, you're looking at spending over 2,000 to... You're almost looking at spending over $2,200 just for the lights alone. Whereas with the Aperture, if you buy three of them, three of the 150s, you're looking at approximately $1,090 if I'm doing the math correctly. Um, no, $1,120. So, uh, you're already pretty good there. And if you do need to use batteries, then of course you're still gonna come out cheaper than if you went with the Aperture. So again, it really depends on budget because if you don't have $1,000 and you want to use the 150, I would say in a three point lighting kit, the most basic setup is to get one 150 and then two 60s. That is gonna be your cheapest and best basic setup because the 150 is gonna handle a big, huge Lalfaz 47 inch softbox. And the other two with some modifiers in front of it is gonna get you your fill light and it's gonna get you your hair light. But if you have a little bit more budget, then of course, get yourself two 150s, 160, so on and so forth. So essentially what I'm saying is it really depends on your budget, but the fact that this 150 does kind of turn into a fanless 60 is definitely something awesome. And you should consider that as you're, de as you're developing your overall lighting kit. And hey, that is it for this week, everybody. If this video has made all the influence in your purchasing decisions, I would truly appreciate it if you check out my Amazon affiliate links down below. Again, this costs nothing extra to you, just gives me a little compensation so I can continue making videos like this for you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to it as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.